Otters spend three to five hours a day underwater. Contrary to seals, they do not have a subdermal layer of insulation. Their hair, dense and lustrous, is the secret to how these animals can stand such cold and varying temperatures of the many rivers they inhabit. In fact, their hair is so warm and shiny that they were hunted for centuries for the manufacture of luxury coats. Their annihilation was so widespread that in countries such as Japan, they have become extinct. The otter's hair is extremely dense, compact, and lustrous. When dry, it has a rather soft texture, but when wet, it forms small strands which seem to become quite entangled as if they were scales. This characteristic, along with its appealing shine, are due to the oils which make them almost watertight and which comes from sebaceous glands. This secreted oil forms an outer barrier which creates a layer of air on the otter's skin, thus completely isolating it and keeping it dry at all times. In the case of the otter, keeping the skin healthy is basic to its survival. The same thing happens with the small Iberian Pyrenean Desmond. This Iberian mole, which is no larger than the length of a hand, follows the same strategy as the otter, although it belongs to a different branch of the food chain, the insectivores. The Pyrenean Desmond spends a lot more time in the water, searching for larvae and aquatic insects. Therefore, it must spend a great deal of energy to groom its own skin and thick hair, clean it, and keep it well oiled in order to provide an appropriate insulation. The Pyrenean Desman is known in many regions as the musk dispenser. Musk is precisely a greasy and thick substance segregated by the cutaneous glands of some mammals. This image allows us to observe that part of the oil which it secretes fills its thick hair and forms a shiny film in the waters of the brook. Because of its unctuousness and aromas, some musks function as basic compounds in the manufacture of certain well-known perfumes. In the case of the Pyrenean Desman, it seems that its pelts were kept in closets, since its smell pleasantly perfumed clothes and deterred moths from entering. Oil as an additive to adequately conserve hairy coverings of animals is not exclusive to mammals. Aquatic birds make good use of the uropygial gland. It is the only external gland which birds have, and it is in charge of preparing the oleic substance which facilitates insulation and a proper feathering process. Most aquatic birds have a particularly developed version of this gland. This special gland is situated on the back of the animal, near the tailbone. One can frequently notice how ducks spread their beaks with this dense secretion, and then in turn spread it on the feathers of all of its body. Plus, it is an extra source of vitamin D. A noticeable exception to this rule can be found in the cormorant, which has developed a very different strategy. The cormorant's feathers lack this additive and therefore get wet very easily. The wet feathers allow them to dive with great ease and therefore a lot faster than their rivals, 
which translates into a greater success rate per immersion. Its success is so high that it needs no more than a couple of fishing sessions a day in order to satisfy its energetic requirements. It's true that cormorants do not spend much time or energy greasing their feathers. They must, however, spend a great deal of time with their wings wide open in order to let the sun dry them completely before they can take flight. Without leaving the water, but in a very different environment, we will discover the armored suit of the crocodile. It is a radically different strategy, but it is quite useful as an insulator, as long as the environment they inhabit is warm. Reptiles do not easily produce and distribute body heat, and their skin is not designed to conserve it, although it is quite effective at insulating the body without losing water. They were the first vertebrates to conquer dry land with unprecedented success. This is partly why crocodiles have barely evolved in almost 90 million years. The skin of the crocodile provides a magnificent physical defense against environmental aggressions. It's a horny shell, a true armor, made of hard scales and shields of bone, which defended them for many millennia until the advent of firearms. Because of unchecked hunting customs, it was exterminated from many of its original habitats. In fact, the locus of points in which it was distributed was drastically reduced, from the American continent to Africa, Asia, and Australia. Its value resides in the beauty of its skin, primitive and highly appealing, it's now a symbol of luxury. In general, reptiles have developed a special covering which envelops the whole body and is at the same time very light, offering heat resistance against desiccation and capable of resisting mechanical work. The King Chlamydosauruses are proof of these advantages. They possess the most widespread horny structures such as scales and epidermal shields. This elastic covering allows them to move very quickly in order to escape from predators or to hunt. Besides this, they possess a peculiar neck which they use to intimidate rivals, although it may not always prove to be effective and at times they have to share their lunch. Far from Australia, where we've met marine crocodiles and chlamydosauruses, we find one of the most interesting cutaneous structures in reptiles. It's the rattlesnake's noisy rattle. These venomous serpents inhabit the forests and deserts of North and Central America. Year after year, they add rings to their rattle which they shake when they perceive they're in danger. The rattle is made of commonly articulated cones, which emit a very well-known sound when they're shaken. Biologists have debated the importance and use of such an artifact, and today we can assert with certainty only that they use the rattle as a warning before defending themselves. Snakes have an interesting scaly covering throughout their whole body. The scales are designed to resist the mechanical work necessary to produce movement, which is essential to them since they constantly slither on their abdominal area. By the same token, we discover another important function of the skin in jungle creatures, 
but this time related to design and color. Certain animals use it as a warning sign, but contrary to the rattlesnake, without all the fuss and noise. The coral snake, with its appealing colors, sends a warning with its colors that it is a very dangerous animal and that it's best not to bother it. These warning colors, these attractive designs which are so appealing, are quite frequent in nature. The combination of black and yellow in wasps accomplishes the same effect. Its painful sting will forever haunt the memory of any animal that attacks it. And this painful memory will forever be black and yellow. It is exactly the same pair of colors as the salamander with the exception that the salamander's skin houses cutaneous glands which secrete a toxic venom capable of irritating the mucous membranes of any animals that try to eat it. Again, the two contrasting colors serve as a warning. <laughs>